This is the neighbor information meeting for the bull run filtration project. It's October 10th, 2024. And today on our agenda, we have a project overview that's going to be given by Michelle Cheek, our program deputy director. We also have a pipeline construction update from our project manager with the Water Bureau, John Johnson, and then also Adam, he's with uh, the a construction contractor on that project. Then we have the facility construction updates from John. He is the, uh, or John Colkman. He is the uh, construction manager for that project with NWH. Um, and so for the next slide, oh, I, sorry, I'm used to somebody else doing this slide adjustment. So that's the agenda slide and here is the water filtration facility, and we will turn it over to Michelle to give that project overview. Yeah, thanks, Bonita. Good, um, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'll start with my usual intro and overview of the project, along with a few highlights, and then turn it over to Adam and John for more information on some of the upcoming construction activities on pipelines and filtration. So this slide um, provides an overview of the facility site looking southwest from the main entry off of Carpenter Lane. And I'll just do a quick walk through of the site there as you come into the site from Carpenter Lane through the roundabout there. Um, the cl clear well will be um, to the right and that's a buried structure that you see there on the right um, with, uh, with that looks like grass on top. Um, and then as you continue your, your way into the facility, you come to our administration building on the right there. And then um, off to the left is our maintenance building. And continuing further into the facility on the right-hand side, we have um, our chemical storage building. And then off to the left, we have our um, solids treatment facility. And then um, further to the, I guess that would be the west, west of the chemical building, got to get my bearings straight here, um, is the heart of the treatment process as water comes into the facility there, it will go through um, our flocculation and sedimentation basins. And that's where um, water is treated and um, allows particles, small particles in the water to join together and settle out um, and then from there, um, the water goes on to our filters and um, from there into the clear well that I mentioned as um, we first started our tour of the facility. Um, next slide, Bonita. Um, sorry, I lost my notes. Um, in addition to the facility itself, we'll, we will be constructing new water pipelines to convey water to and from the facility and our existing pipelines in the area. To the east of the facility site, a new unfiltered water pipeline will convey water from our existing pipelines and Lusted Road to the southeast corner of the facility. To the north and west of the site, a new filtered water pipeline will convey filtered and treated water from the clear well to a new finished water inner tie and our existing pipelines into Portland. We'll also be constructing a local distribution main and control road to provide filtered water to existing customers in the area. The pipeline construction will occur in segments along the pipeline routes and Adam will share more information about upcoming phases of pipeline construction. Um, and access to the filtration facility site during construction and ultimate operations will be east off of Cottrell Road onto Carpenter Lane and during the site from the north. We will also have an emergency access to Bluff Road and Clackamas County to the south. Next slide, Bonita. Um, our filtration contractor um, has been making good progress at the facility site on mass excavation and initial earthwork activities and recently completed improvements to Carpenter Lane and other designated construction hull routes. These road improvements were required prior to their use during construction and provide safe access for construction traffic and other road users. Trucks will be using different routes at different times throughout the project depending on activities at the site 
but must follow allowed haul routes at all times. Um, our haul routes have been signed in the field and haul route maps have been provided to our construction truck drivers as part of our project training. Our contractors are also responsible for monitoring and maintaining the condition of roads in the Multnomah County project area as defined um, through the land use process for the project. Next slide, Bonita. So we know this is a big project and there are going to be a lot of trucks on the road, but we are committed to traffic safety during construction of this project. Um, we'll be using signage, flagging, and other uh, traffic control methods to um, uh, guarantee safety. We'll be maintaining pedestrian access through all of our work zones. We'll be providing ongoing communication uh, to provide notice of planned work areas, timing, and alternate routes if needed. We'll be coordinating across both our pipelines project and the filtration project to sequence activities and distribute truck traffic um, to limit impacts to the surrounding area and roads. We'll be instructing our contractors to avoid school zones prior to and just after start and end times um, of school. And we'll also be instructing our contractors to limit um, their impact to farm traffic operations as defined in our conditions of approval. And with that, I will turn it over to Adam to share more information about the planned work on the pipelines portion of the project. Great, thank you, Michelle. Um, as she said, my name is Adam Ward. I work for the Bull Run Conveyance Partners, and we're responsible for the construction of uh, the pipeline that feeds the new plant and uh, the pipeline that uh, takes the new filtered water um, into the city. So current phases that we're working on right now, it's, it's a lot of verifying existing conditions and securing material for the upcoming installation of the new pipeline. Uh, those of you that are out there, you'll probably see us doing a lot of uh, uh, clearings uh, in our current uh, construction areas. We're widening some of the roads to help facilitate traffic um, during the installation of those pipelines. And you'll probably start to see some equipment start to show up on site here in the next couple months. That'll be there for a while. Uh, future phases, we'll obviously have the pipeline installation. There'll be some tunneling work uh, for both sides coming out of the plant. Uh, and then also we'll wrap it up with some uh, road restoration and site cleanup at the end of the job. Next slide, Anita. Uh, Michelle uh, mentioned this earlier in her presentation about the roads that were improved prior to any major hauling or construction activities happening. Uh, these have been completed. This map kind of highlights those areas, uh, the road coming there off of Altman Road, uh, Hosner, and then also part of Lusted as well. So these have been completed, striped, and uh, ready for safe travel for local residents and construction traffic. Next slide, Bettina. So some single lane closures that are coming up uh, that uh, the public will see. Um, right now, if you go on Altman Road, you'll see that we're doing some road widening there. Uh, as I said earlier, that's going to help with the flow of traffic uh, once we start doing major uh, pipeline installation activities. Uh, they completed it on Lusted, uh, but also what's going to follow on Lusted and Altman here in the month of November is the new Pleasant Home Water District uh, water line. So that'll run uh, on Lusted uh, where the dash lines are there on C and then up Altman as well is where that new pipeline will go in. And that'll complete around the end of January is what we're targeting right now. Uh, another one that's noted on here is Dodge Park. Uh, so no major construction activities happening on Dodge Park this year, but what we wanna to try to do is get all the trees cleared and out of the way uh, before the end of the year. Uh, so you will see some one-way traffic there starting uh, this month, but also ending this month. Uh, on Dodge Park as well. And I think that's ready for the next slide. And then full road closures. So for full road closures, uh, just so you know, you know, whenever we do a full road closure, we'll have, we'll have detour set up so um, everyone can get to their destination. Local traffic will still be able to get through and access, you know, their house or 
or whatever business they have there. Uh, and we'll also make sure emergency vehicles can get through. Uh, our plan is also to make sure buses can get through on these closures as well, uh, so we don't impact the school traffic as well. Um, but for closures we have coming up, uh, I mentioned the Pleasant Home Water District work uh, that's going on in the month of uh, uh, November, December, and January. Um, when we go through the intersection of Luston and Altman, there will be a time when we'll have to do a closure there. Um, and then the other one that's called out is over on Lusted Road. Uh, you can kind of see where the green line runs into the dash line. That's our main connection point for uh, the future pipelines. Uh, so we'll be doing some investigative um, work to look at the existing connections so that we make sure we're ordering the right, uh, the right product and it comes out and we have a smooth installation uh, later on in 2025. I think that might be it for me. And I'm gonna pass it over to John Coakman, who's the project manager for the facility. Okay, thanks, Adam. Yes, yeah, so an update on the, uh, initially, uh, the current phases of construction uh, are still working on the access improvements. As you see there, just uh, I think we talked about the, the road improvements that have been done leading up to the plant. And then a lot of the work on the job site itself, the initial activities that have been required to uh, dig the excavations needed for the large uh, treatment uh, structures that will be going into the site. Uh, um, as I said, the, the, the primary focus has been on those excavations, but that's leading up to some of these future phase activities for concrete for the, the main basins that will eventually be followed by the process mechanical and electrical work, both indoor and outdoor for some of the uh, distribution around the job site. Uh, once all of those structures are in and the process buildings are in, uh, to move into a commissioning and startup line system that Adam has just outlined. Previously, and then there'll be a little bit of cleanscaping, the permanent fencing, uh, just the general site restoration and clean up at the end. So if we go to the next slide. I'm getting notifications that my internet connection is not very good. So apologies if this is not coming through clear, but uh, recently we have gone through and completed the improvements to Carpenter Lane. The Carpenter Lane improvements are primarily done. There's a few cleanup activities still to be done with removing some of the old PGE uh, power poles. And then uh, there'll be some additional work sort of towards the intersection of Carpenter, Cottrell, and Dodge Park. Um, I think we've got a slide in, in the next slide uh, outlining that. And that is currently scheduled for this Saturday to do the final lift of paving at that intersection to get the Dodge Park, Cottrell, and then uh, Cottrell, Carpenter uh, complete with a final lift of paving. Uh, there will be flagging uh, associated with that. There'll still be uh, emergency access uh, maintained throughout that process, but that will sort of finish off a lot of that uh, final uh, restoration of that area such that it's uh, not impacted as it has been during the construction of that road. Uh, so if we go to the next one. So this is uh, a bit of an overview of the site looking sort of towards the the southeast. Um, the ongoing facility constructions, as I mentioned earlier, the, the major activities have revolved around sort of excavating those two main areas that you see that have got the uh, protected slopes now with the, with the plastic over those slopes, which is what's showing up as white there. Uh, that's where the main treatment 
uh, structures are going to be built. Some of the work that's going on to support that construction activity that's coming up is uh, installation or mobilization, I should say, of the, the cranes that will be used to uh, do the construction work. Uh, there's various other ancillary stuff still ongoing with some um, temporary site access roads still being finished off. One of the things that we have uh, done on this particular project is is pave the temporary roads, which is not normal, but it really does help with regards to uh, track out of material and just being able to sort of maintain the public roads once you get off the site in a better condition. Um, and that will really help as we start the process of hauling off some of the excavated material that's come out of those two large excavations and that off-hauling of the uh, clean stockpile material was is actually starting um, now and will continue on for, for quite some time until the uh, material is moved from this site to uh, disposal locations. And then, you know, with all of that work going on, we've also just got the, the construction itself. And so the first thing that they have to do at the bottom of those excavations is the is the under drain systems for the structures and some of those piping and, as I said, concrete activities will start as those structures start to get built and come up out of the ground. So that's just a bit of an overview of where things sit at the moment. Um, if we go to the next slide. That was the end of my bit, so I'll hand it back. All right, well, back to me. So, um, does anyone have any questions or comments for um, anyone on the team what about the pipelines? And, uh, anything that Shell was talking about with the project overview facility? You can raise your hand, you can talk in the chat. Cool. Uh, yeah. Tony, I just have a couple sure. questions. Sure. I know that you guys mentioned that you guys are committed to traffic safety. Um, how does that work on like our road, the whole fix it first thing, our road still isn't done. There are no lines painted on it. And I, it's a beautiful, smooth road now, um, which means people are going about 45 miles an hour down it when the construction sign says 15. We finally got that in. So how does that look when you guys are committed to traffic safety? I know we had a double dump truck hauler roll through the um stop sign at uh, Dodge Park, down in Dodge Park. So I just wonder, I wonder how yeah. that looks. And you're on Carpenter Lane, right? Oh yeah. To be clear. Mm -hmm. um, John Goldman, do you want to talk about the safety of um, and the striping that's happening or is there striping that's going to be happening on Carpenter Lane? Yeah, so um... Yeah, and I think um, with regards to the Carpenter Lane, there is striping still to come on that, Christy. I think mm -hmm. that the initial design didn't actually uh, call for it, but within discussions, we are looking to get sort of uh, edge striping and centre striping put on that road. As you say, um, the road is a lot smoother now and people are able to sort of potentially travel quite a bit faster. I was there actually on the site this morning and you've got to really – you do have to pay attention to keep down to that 15 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I think I uh, sort of looking to, um, Tom has been talking to uh, the contractor doing that to see if we can get some uh, temporary speed bumps put mm -hmm. in uh, as in, another effort to try and sort of keep people's speeds down. Um, in general, the construction traffic as I was coming in, and believe me, that's only just a brief snapshot for one one trip in and one trip out. Everyone was sort of reasonably uh, well behaved and I was doing 15 and sort of catching up with the people in front of me. So I think in general, the craft hands and the staff people that are coming in and out of a site are observing the 15. The truck drivers, we are trying to be mindful of that. Some people have been... Uh, the people that we have caught speeding um, are on that uh, three strikes and you're out. Some of the one of the workers was observed um, accosting, some unnecessary comment to the neighbours and was summarily dismissed. 
So we are trying to be sort of mindful of the, in, in particular, the people on Carpenter Lane who are going to be uh, more impacted. And I believe sort of Tom is taking sort of point on making sure that we're trying to keep people uh, mm -hmm. well under the requirements and, and be mindful of, of the residents. Yeah, Tom has been um, phenomenal in that. I just, it, it is really tough when you're, when you live on a dead end street um, to have the traffic. We, the new road is great, but it is, and we have a lot of people that come down, you know, we should have Sunday as a day where we don't have any, as much traffic, but uh, when work first started before our street was ever even worked on, uh, one of the trucks took out our dead end sign. So there's no dead end sign and there's no sign that says like local traffic only. So we get a lot of people coming down like, what are these huge cranes here for? Um, and I stop at least two cars every Sunday to ask them to slow down. So I'm sure though, I don't know what they'll do to my house, but it, they're just flying down the road. And it, this isn't construction people. The people going down to yeah. the construction site on Sunday are fine. There's not many of them because they're not supposed to work on Sunday, but they're fine. It's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of traffic. And while some people are the 15 mile an hour work or helps, but it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. Whereabouts was the dead end sign, Chrissy? So it was on the um, south side, kind of right across from Mike Cohen's house. And they it, okay. that happened in the winter. They were bringing trucks down and they took that out in the winter and that hasn't ever been replaced. And I don't know oh, that okay. it would help, but it's kind of like we call them looky loos. The people that come down and just want to look, they turn around yeah. and then they fly back down. Um the other question that I had real quick is that when you guys say you're going to distribute truck traffic, that probably doesn't help Carpenter Lane residents at all, does it? Um, no. I mean, unfortunately, the, the truck traffic that comes in and out of the site just to get that material taken off, plus bringing in mm -hmm. the various construction equipment, it's a sort of single point of entry for the project. And Right. Whilst the truck traffic, once it gets further afield, can meander off into Altman or down to one of the other other roads, mm -hmm. um, Carpenter is a little bit of a, a one way in and out, unfortunately. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure, so you might put up the map again that shows the th changes you're going to be making. So I live on the, I, I live on pipeline road. I have two properties and the one of them that is going to be very severely impacted is this one over on uh, at the end of pipeline. And it also is on, uh, I have on both, both sides of the property, uh, both sides of the, the, sorry, I'm not been well, so I'm, I'm trying to communicate here and I'm, I'm, Take your time. So I live on my property is faces a uh, pipeline. It's uh, also cornered by Altman and Oxbow. So it's the very end property. And there's also property on the other side of the Altman on that's on Altman and Oxbow. So I have a little corner piece of the property right there. Yeah. So I have both sides of that property right there. And it says you're going to be widening out that property, that road. Um, so I don't know how that's going to affect my property, but I'd like to know exactly what you intend to do that will affect my property. I have a artesian well on the south side, uh, pardon me, the north side of my property. It's on the lower level on Altman. And I don't know if that by how deep you're going to go, that's going to may change my artesian well. I would like to know that as well. I haven't gotten any notice on the, on any of this, so I'm very frustrated that I have that you're just doing stuff and I won't know it. And it may very well affect my my artesian well. Am I going to lose that? If you go very deep, I will. Okay. 
I know we did send out some letters and some door hangers, but Anna, do you want to talk about? Well, I've only sort of owned the property for a little over a year, so I'd like to know all of the details of it. Yeah, so where your property is, Janice, um, right now the, the work will be pretty minimal. Um, you're just seeing the road widening, but that road widening is temporary. So at the end of the job, we remove that widening and put it back to original condition along with repairing um, uh, Altman Road there. Um, but where you're describing as your property is that is where we have to connect to the existing system. Uh, for two of the existing conduits. So as far as depth, it's not going to be deeper than the existing connection that's there right now. Um, but I don't know how that's going to affect your artesian well, unfortunately. But well, we should um, find out because that's, I mean, that's that's worth anywhere a hundred thousand on. I mean, so yeah, you have a well, and I should I should not have to bear the brunt of that. Yeah, I know and what the bureau is doing. And also the, the property, the old water line used to go down Pipeline Road so that it didn't go down into the Al Oxbow Canyon. It went down Altman, I mean, pardon me, it went down Altman to Pipeline, turned the corner, and the water to Portland went down Pipeline Road. So why aren't you doing that? Well, we're not going down Pipeline Road. We're connecting at the intersection of Altman and Pipeline, if that makes sense. So we're not we're not going to be traveling down that. That's where our connection points are. Same same with Oxbow, but this is this is way down the line, right? So we will make sure to communicate any of these impacts here in the future, and we're going to be doing some investigative works of where those connection points are, um, and you know we'll definitely be communicating with you as far as you know what that looks like. But I don't expect uh, to have any negative impact on me or, or I I will be uh, asserting my rights that, that should not. This is this is terrible that my property is having a well taken out of it. I, well, I don't Adam, know just want to clarify too, all of this work is happening in the public right of way, correct? It's not happening. Well, it doesn't matter property. if it's affecting the right of way or not. If it's if it's affecting my well, if you're taking out my well with your activity uh, within a few feet of my property, it's still, you're still affecting my well. It's my well, you're taking it away from me. Do you know how deep your well is? It's artesian. That means it's it comes to the surface on its own. So if you take out, if you dig down further a few feet out from my property and the water goes away, you you've destroyed my well. I think we should take a closer look at that, Adam. Um, I don't know if we can, Janice, we can touch base offline and figure out a time to come out to your property and take a look at exactly what the situation is. You can read, I'll give you my email and phone number right now. Oh, I will wait till I don't, because we're recording this, I don't want you to do that online. Uh, and this will be on our website, but I, I'll know how to. I don't know how to connect to you otherwise. I tried yeah. to call. I've tried to call to answer my questions. I spent uh, several hours last Friday calling different places and leaving messages, and I didn't get any return this week. And I've been near my phone, so I it, it shouldn't be that I I, I need I, I don't mind giving my phone. It's on my website anyway. I just want to talk to somebody to get my answers. Okay. I'm not well right now, and I need yeah. I I can't be spending a lot more time trying to go after you. I you need to be responsive to me. I okay. I've not seen any information from you or any phone calls from you. So uh, let's touch base. Um, How do I touch and, base? Uh, there's a phone number on this. Is this the phone number? Do you know if you've used previously? I don't know. Okay, so well, actually, why don't you give me a call to my line, which is 503-865-6039. 503-865-6039. Correct. Thank you. And no what's problem. your name? Bonita. Bonita. Thank you, Bonita. Mm -hmm. 
anyone else? Or actually, Janice, I just want to make sure that all of the issues that you you were thinking of were. I don't want my property to be negatively affected by this, especially the well. Or the are you reducing the the property? Um, it's on a steep hill, so if you start taking, uh, I don't know what you mean. You're going to be widening it. There's a steep uh, impact, so. E Will my property still be fit for livestock when you get through with it? The sides of it by widening this up? Or Shit, the only widening that's happening, it's within the public right of way. Um, it's probably six feet past the road edge, roughly, is how far it's widened. So the existing road, you'll see, I mean, they're paint that's it's probably what is out there right now is you'll see is as wide as it's gonna get. Okay. Right. Any other questions? I'm very frustrated with the amount of communication with with the people that you're you're affecting our whole lifestyle. We come out here to be in the in the countryside where we won't be bothered, and this is stuff you should have done either further out in the forest or or you should have been doing it in where it's going to affect the people that are going to get the water. I'm just very frustrated that you're just taking over our property. It feels very wrong to me. Well, we do have a number of facilities in the area and also a number of customers in this area. Um, thousands that are direct water bureau customers that have been from um, when they were grandfathered in years ago. And then we also have a number of wholesalers that get water from us that will benefit from this project. And it you, is you a requirement. But I, we already had very clean water. So I, you're putting terrible chemicals into the water and not far from a school that our kids go to. And I think that puts them in danger as well. So I'm not happy about it. Okay, thank you for sharing, Janice. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Bonita, this is uh, Natalie Vores. Can you hear me? Sure. Yep, I can hear you. Hi. I think what I have is more of a comment directed, and I think it's more sure. for Adam. So um, I emailed the other day about um, some concerns, and I really think that we can improve safety if we have um, thoughtful placement of equipment. So when you're driving on Altman and you're approaching Lusted, um, some of the equipment being placed so close to that intersection really um, makes it more dangerous to approach that intersection because you can't see. So if they would back away some of the equipment and some of the parking of their personal vehicles and walk just a little bit. Um, I had a situation where um, I was, you know, I showed pictures, but I was waved through, they had to stop. Had a person's personal vehicle not been parked right so close to the where they were doing construction, it would have greatly reduced the danger of going through that area. Secondly, I had a dump truck that stopped on Lusted so that he could go use the restroom blocking the lane. So when I needed to go straight through Altman, um, I, I couldn't see if oncoming traffic was coming. And that traffic is going, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour after that construction site is closed. Um, so if we can have, you know, be thoughtful about where we're parking, if it takes a couple extra steps to get to where they need to work. Um, yes, uh, yesterday morning I had flaggers, you know, usually I go through before seven, but you know, they were standing in the road and it was dark and it's very hard to see. I'm, I, I, I'm fearful, not just that a resident will get injured, but that someone is going to get injured if safety is not a priority. And I'm not seeing safety being a priority right now. Well, Natalie, I appreciate the feedback. Um, 
you know, I, I did see the pictures and we definitely did waterfall that down to everyone on site. And, you know, it was part of our toolbox talk the next day uh, on how we can improve. So I, I do honestly appreciate the feedback when you send that through to uh, bull run projects. It does get to us and we do take action on it. So, um, again, appreciate the feedback and we'll, we'll work to improve the conditions on site. Yeah, and I'll just add too that it's really helpful to have the photos um, for anything that you feel is not safe or um, if you see someone that's running this stop sign, if you get a video of that, I mean, we, we definitely want to hold people accountable and we're always looking to improve. Yeah, we just bought for our entire family uh, um, dash cams because some of the stuff that we've seen has just been incredible. And if we could get it on on video, we'll definitely be sending it. That includes dump trucks piggybacking through stop signs, you know, yeah. cutting the corner at Altman and almost hitting us head on. It's 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 been quite the experience already, and it's just you know some someone is going to get hurt seriously during this uh, event. Um, it's just going to happen, and uh, yeah, if if we can do what we can to make sure that that's lessened, that would be great. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Bonita, I had a question about the survey video that was supposed to be done back in the summer. And then we, it was, I even talked to the gentleman that was going to come out. Remember the video work? In the house? Video. You guys were going to come out and do like a survey of the houses. Oh, of the, yeah, of the homes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then that didn't happen. Well, you needed to sign the form to allow us access to do that. And I believe that your household did not. Well, that, that was, well, I had directly talked to the gentleman that was going to come out just to get more information uh -huh. um, and just to kind of see, I, I had hoped that like Portland Water Bureau was kind of looking out for us, but I don't think that that was the case. But then we never heard. He said, oh, I'll call. Let me connect with Portland Water Bureau and then let's make a time and this and that. Because I just needed more information about where this video footage was going to go, how this was going to work. And then we never heard back from anyone. Okay. Yeah, so that it wasn't the only one on, the, on this end of Carpenter Lane that didn't hear back. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So well, I, just, I, I didn't, you did not communicate that with me, but we can definitely set up a time with you and the, well, he's, okay. well now, I mean, now we're yeah. already seeing issues. I mean, our house shakes constantly. Mm -hmm. So the, the road work mm -hmm. shakes our house, the driving the pylons in 40 feet into the ground or whatever it is shakes our house. So just that that gentleman went on leave or something, I think. And so yeah, he had to take some time off. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I haven't talked to any of the neighbors who did who did that, but that's so that's not so you're saying that we could still have that done, but that's more for you guys, right? Well, it's for you as well. I mean, you would get the report just as well. Um, and then you can use that to compare later with, you know, after the project is complete. Well, after the damage is done. And which is really what's happening. If you like to still set up a time, we can certainly do that. Okay. Well, I'll go through Tom for that. Okay. Um, I don't think that Tom really has any connection with the, the surveys, so. Well, no, that's fine. But I would just, we'll talk to Tom about Tom's just been more receptive. And I think that the people out on, I don't think this, I know this, that the people out here feel more heard um, when dealing with Tom versus, you know, it's our right of way. We're just going to take that. Um, you know, it, it's terrible living out here. My summer was destroyed. It's loud all the time. We constantly hear the beeping, e even on Sundays. And I'm like, constantly, is someone out there working? No, it's just in your head because you hear it all the time. I can't even imagine what it's like to live down at the end of the street. 
And it's so sad because we poured our life savings into re renovating this house and keeping this farm in our name. And Tom is the person that is the one that is hearing us versus any time I've talked to you, it's very cold and just this is the way it is. And I honestly think if you were out here, not just a little bit or this or that, if you came out here and saw this and had to deal with it, you would be like crawling out of your skin. So I think that a little compassion on the part of the Portland Water Bureau, especially when we're going to have to pay this 300% increase in rates over the next how many years? Like, I think a little compassion goes a long way. You know, half of my yard was taken. Yes, it's your right of way. I get it. But those were, if you, like the fence coming down, if you would have just told me to remove the plants, I could have taken them out way back when I, they wouldn't have died. We lost hundreds of dollars in plants. So it's like, there's just zero compassion. And I think that is what the hardest thing is. So I don't know. We lived on this dead end road and I grew up here and you just con completely destroyed the landscape and the livelihood of us. And we're handcuffed. We can't, I can't get out of here in the next seven to 10 years or however long it's going to take. You know, you didn't fix it first because our road is still being worked on while there's dump trucks and all this stuff going down. So I just, I, I'm just, a little compassion would go a long ways is what I'm saying. There's already damage done to our house. So I, maybe I didn't sign the survey thing, but we have a lot going on out here and it's enough for me to try to take pictures of the people who are speeding, go out, slow them down. Someone it's beeping. I got to go look out. I got to go down to the site. I constantly feel like I'm the one that is looking for these contingencies to be followed. And it wasn't until Tom stepped up and said, Hey, let me know what's happening that I finally feel like I don't not running a full-time job. So when some when a dump truck runs a stop sign, I am not going to take out my phone and try to video him while I'm driving. I can't do that. So is something Natalie is right. Something tragic is going to happen. Something terrible is going to happen and that just will be on you guys. I'm just saying for the people that live out here in the country because it's peaceful you've taken that away and showing some compassion would mean a lot. Understood, Christy. I know this has not been easy, especially for you folks on Carpenter Lane. Um, we really do try to do what we can to make it easier. And I think there's a lot of things that Tom can do that we can't because he's the one that's out there. Um, but what we can do, what we're offering is the, the, um the assessment so we can continue to do that we can work on getting um things as safe as we possibly can i mean we do have people out there doing spot checks on these uh traffic situations too i know the county has people out there um and we we don't want to put that all on you um, or anybody else out there, but it, it helps us to try to minimize the situations even happening in the first place, if we are able to to work together to make sure that things are happening that are safe out there. Um, we, uh, I don't know, Michelle, if you wanted to mention anything about the, the Water Bureau's perspective on, uh, situation out there yeah christy i i appreciate you sharing your concerns and your feelings and we are empathetic and um, our apologies if we don't come across that way i can't imagine how hard it is to live out there across from this construction site um you know and it will be going on for you know a few more years and so we are empathetic to that. I wouldn't want to personally be in those shoes. Um, but, you know, 
calm and, um, you know, like Benita said, he can, um, he's out there on a daily basis and can hear your concerns um, probably more easily than we can or more directly than we can. Um, so I can encourage you to continue to, to share those with him and, um, you know, hopefully Tom will share those with us and we can work together and try to find ways to mitigate any issues that are occurring. Um, and, you know, unfortunately we've got a project that we've got to get done over the next few years. And, um, but we do want to, to work with the folks on Carpenter Lane to make it um, as least impactful as possible. And I realize that there's, you know, honestly not a lot we can do, um, you know, to, to minimize those impacts. You guys are living next to a construction site for um, the next few years and a big one. So, um, you know, I, I do feel for you and I, and I'm sorry that you're having to, to go through this. Well, and you guys are, well, I've said this to Bonita before, you guys are welcome to come out. I have a rocking chair on my front porch, sit on the front porch. Traffic starts at 515 in the morning and it is a steady stream of cars and trucks coming down our lane. Many times we have semis parked. The other morning there was a semi parked out front of our house. So, you know, it's like spend a day and see what it's like. The I got to look at this, you know, reflective pedestrian walk barrier thing that is just hideous. You know, so I just, I don't know. We, and we have heard about, um, you know, the, the look of the pedestrian pathway and, and um, have been looking at um, ways we can make that less ugly. Mm -hmm. um, so we have heard your concerns on that. Um, and unfortunately, you know, Carpenter Lane is our only access to and from the site. And so all construction traffic is going to be coming down Carpenter Lane. Um, and there's not Unfortunately, there's not anything we can do about that. Uh, real quick, Christy, I don't think uh, we've had the opportunity to meet. So uh, my name is John Johnson. Uh, I'm a Hi, John. construction manager in our in our construction management group. And, uh, you know, we largely work with the contractors, John and Adam here. And uh, uh, I just want to ask Medina to, to pass my phone number along to you um, as another oh, point of contact. So, uh, yeah, um, to a certain extent, we, these guys are working directly kind of under our direction and management as far as the construction managers assigned to the, to the, to the project. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just, uh, get my phone number, give me a call and, uh, and let me, let me hear how, we, what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Right. Well, I mean, we do appreciate you all taking the time. I know this is your dinner time, time you typically spend with your family. Um, and we appreciate you coming to these meetings and sharing your concerns and questions, because this is one of the best ways that we can help answer those questions um, for you to be able to get information that you're looking for. So um, I hope that uh, others will also continue to come. We do have the coffee chat that's uh, the second Thursday mornings of the month. So that will be November 14th. And then again, on December 12th, we've got some feedback that um, the location was a little too far from the site. So we're looking at bringing that a little bit closer for the North November 14th meeting. Um, and then we also have uh, 
the next neighbor meeting, uh, January 9th. And uh, also went backwards. Um, you can sign up for text alerts. The text alerts give you information about what the traffic impacts are coming up. It's for limited characters on there, but at least it will give you an idea of what's coming up in the following week. And then you can, there's a link to each of those texts that go to the website that has the more detailed information about what sort of traffic impacts are coming up. I know that uh, Adam talked a little bit about what those closures are coming up, but then really the best way to be able to get that weekly information is through the text messages, through our website, e-news letter, and um, if you have any questions, you can also contact us uh, by email or phone. So with that, we give another minute to see if anybody has any questions or comments, concerns, and if not, we will call it an evening and we'll see you at the coffee chat. All right. So thanks everyone and uh, hope you have a good evening.